In this video, we shall learn about two dimensional arrays, how to declare them, what are their uses and how to write a program using a two dimensional array. A two dimensional array is used to represent matrices. What is a matrix? It is arrangement of numbers in the form of rows and columns. We all know that. Now, if I have to represent a matrix using a program, then I will have to use a two dimensional array. So let us see how to declare a two dimensional array. So the way we declare a two dimensional array procedure to declare a two dimensional array is very similar to how we declare one dimensional array. We need to mention the data type and then we'll give array name. Here we have to give two dimensions that is two sizes size one and size two. Usually what are these size one and size two? This is the row number or we can say number of rows similar to a matrix and this denotes the number of columns. Now let us see an example for the same. We usually use int or float or double to declare two dimensional arrays. We can also use character data type but that becomes strings. We will learn that in upcoming videos. Right now we will consider only numerical data types. I will consider int as a data type name of the array let me take it as mat mat is the name of the array and here i will give 3 2 this is one example let me take another example float sum 2 3 so what does this mean here mat is a two dimensional array with three rows and two columns. Sum is a two dimensional array with two rows and three columns. So this is how we declare a two dimensional array. And when we declare an array, next is memory has to be allotted for this. Now the memory allot allocation for this is also continuous memory allocation in the same way as it is allotted for a single dimensional array. If I declare int a5, a is a array, and size is 5 this is a one dimensional array meaning we will have continuous memory allocation for uh, storing five elements five int values name common name for all these five int uh, values is a and every position we can access using subscript it's also called as array index or subscript always the array index starts from 0 and up to n minus 1 so this we have already explained in the previous video. In case you have not watched it, uh, right now in the top this uh, uh, description for this video, link for this video will be available. You can go through the video to understand how a one dimensional array is created and accessed. So this is in case of a one dimensional array. Now here we have created a two dimensional array. Now let us see how memory is allotted for this. Now what is this array? This is going to represent a matrix with three rows and two columns, something like this. Two columns and three rows. So this is row one, row two and row three. This is column one and column two. So if you have a matrix of this type, to represent this, we are going to declare an array like this. But when this is allotted in the memory, when memory is allotted for this, it is not going to allot the memory in the form of a matrix. Memory is allotted in a linear way only. So here totally we are going to have six elements, right? We will have six values here. We will have contiguous memory allocation for these six values. One, two, three, four. 5 and 6 and common name for all the 6 values is mat. Now 3 rows and 2 columns are there. As you know the starting value is always for index variable the value is 0. Therefore this is row number 0, row number 1, row number 2. This is column number 0, column number 1. Now first row is represented using 0, first column is 0 because first row elements are stored first. 0, 0, 0, 1. Next is 1011, next is 2021. So here, first we will have our first row elements. This is second row elements. And this is third row elements. As you see, a matrix of this format 
can be represented using a two dimensional array but inside memory it is not stored in the form of a matrix it is represented in a linear way only and while we are printing we have to again print it in the form of a matrix now how is the memory uh, assigned for this as you know every value requires two bytes every int value requires two bytes so suppose address uh, for this first location is say 2000 suppose then the next value is at 2002 that next value is at 2004 next at 2006 this is at 2008 and this is at 2010 so totally 12 bytes of memory is allotted every two bytes is for a value and first row elements are stored first next the next row and then the third row elements are stored now how do we access this here to access we required a variable right we usually used variable i and that is called as the array index or the array subscript isn't it now in this one uh, in two dimensional array we will require two subscripts one is your row subscript and the other one is column subscript you can say it as row index and column index here we will use two variables i and j it's not mandatory to use i and j you can use any variable usually we use these two variables i and j this is to represent row index number and this is to represent column index number when we are writing program we are going to use these two variables to represent row index and column index number here uh, i should start from 0 and it should be less than 3 because it is representing three rows row numbers are going to be 0 1 and 2 and column uh, we have only two columns therefore j is going to be 0 or 1 this is one example you can have any number of uh, rows and columns you can have five rows six columns you can have two rows and two columns you can have any number of rows and columns now what is the memory required for this array it is uh, number of rows into number of columns this is number of elements that are stored this many values we are going to store into data type size so in that in the first example where we had int mat 3 comma 2 here the size is number of rows is 3 number of columns is 2 so we have totally 6 elements into 2 bytes which gives you 12 bytes means 12 bytes of memory is required to store this uh, four val 6 values Suppose I have float uh, sum 2 comma 2. In this case, what is the size required? We have two rows into two columns which will be four elements and float requires four bytes. Therefore, it will require 16 bytes. Here we have six elements. It will require two, 12 bytes. Whereas here we had only four elements, but still it requires 16 bytes because the data type size is different. So this is how memory is allotted when we declare a two dimensional array. Now, how do we print it or how do we access the elements? So we have declared an array. Next, we have to assign values to this. For assigning values, we can use either static initialization or we can use dynamic initialization. So assigning values. Usually we will not give static initialization uh, values are provided at the time of program execution only. So suppose if you want to give static initialization then how do you assign we declare we assign values while declaration itself like this. So let me take uh, int sum um, 2 comma 2 means 2 rows and 2 columns here we have to make sure that every row's values are put in curly braces so this entire thing should be put inside another set of curly braces so i will take 2 comma 3 this is first row elements comma 1 comma 5 this is second row elements and this entire thing is to be enclosed within another set of flower brackets now in sum 2 comma 2 first row elements are 2 comma 3 second row elements are 1 comma 5 1 and 5 so uh, two rows and two columns elements are written if you write one more pa uh, pair of values here 
you will not get any error but that is not stored anywhere suppose you write less then only whatever values you have given that will be assigned other values will be uh, it won't be assigned you can assign it later so this is how you give static assignment and according to this 2 is stored in the first location 3 is stored in the next location so basically here this is going to be at location 0 0 this is at 0 1 this is at 1 0 and 1 1 these are location numbers okay now uh, let us this is how you assign static statically that is uh, in the program itself next is dynamic initialization for dynamic initialization we will be using scanf statement while executing the program we are going to read the values from the standard input so to use scanf statement we also need a for loop here because we are going to use this uh, array subscripts row index and column index please remember this if it's a one dimensional array you need one for loop if it's a two dimensional array you need two for loops one inside the other that is nested for loops so here we will need a two dimensional uh, we have a two dimensional array therefore we need nested for loop first one is going to count the row number i equals to 0 i less than 3 this is for um, int mat 3 comma 2 3 and 2 so we have 3 rows and 2 columns so i is 0 i less than 3 i plus plus inside this for loop we will write one more for j equals to 0 j less than 2 because we have 2 columns right j plus plus and here we will write a scanf statement to read the values now i will read one value one int value and it is stored in the address of ij mat ij and this is how we take dynamic assignment now for mat 3 2 as explained earlier address is assigned like this right 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is mat this is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 2 0 2 1 so when i is 0 is it less than 3 true next j is 0 so we enter the loop j is assigned 0 is it less than 2 yes true so we will enter the loop we'll read one value we are storing at mat i j so i is also 0 j is also 0 so we are storing the value at mat 0 0 which is here suppose i give the values 10 20 30 40 50 and 60 okay so one value is stored and the one value is uh, uh, read and it is stored here we are not supposed to give commas we have to separate them by spaces next j gets incremented j becomes 1 is 1 less than 2 true so we enter the loop we read one more value where are we storing it now again at the location ij i is 0 j is 1 so whatever value we are going to read now it is stored at 0 1 location number which is this location next j becomes 2 j gets incremented j becomes 2 now the condition is checked 2 less than 2 is false since the condition is false compiler does not enter the loop it comes to the next instruction where that is the end of for loop so it goes to the modification part where i is incremented i becomes 2 now i becomes 1 it gets incremented earlier it was 0 it becomes 1 is 1 less than 3 yes so we enter the loop as I had told earlier uh, under loops when we enter a loop from its previous instruction this initialization will happen freshly again so j equals to 0 so j is again assigned to 0 is 0 less than 2 yes so we enter the loop now we read a value and store it in mat ij now i is 1 and j is 0 now at the location 1 0 we are going to store the next value so location 1 0 is here and this is a value we are storing next j becomes 1 next value is stored at 1 1 next j becomes 2 and the condition becomes false so now uh, compiler goes back to the main loop and it increases the value of i so this way six times this loop gets executed and every value is stored in each of these locations in a matrix this is how we assign values during runtime that is dynamic initialization of a two-dimensional array
Now after assigning this values whenever we need to access all the values we have to use uh, uh, this uh, nested for loop. So keep this in mind. For one dimensional array we need uh, one for loop and we need one index variable. Okay we need one index variable only. Usually we'll use i but we can use anything else like this so we will write for i equals to 0 i less than 5 again 5 is just an example you can write whatever is according to your program now we will write a scanf statement here read either int or float whatever is the data type that you have given ampersand a i this is how we give the instruction for reading values this is for one dimensional array if it's a two dimensional array For a two dimensional array, we need two loops, two for loops and they have to be nested loops means one inside another and we need two index variables. One is the row index and one is the column index variable. You can take a screenshot of this because it is the uh, uh, most important one. If you understand this, then there is no need. So for two, two index variables i and j and we have to write nested loop for i equals to zero suppose number of uh, lines is 5 that is rows i plus plus and another loop inside this for j equals to 0 j less than 3 j plus plus here we will write a scanf statement we will read one value be it int or float anything now ampersand a we have to use both these index variables in square brackets i and j so every value we are reading we are storing it at location number ij so this is for two dimensional arrays to read the values. Next, let us see how to print these values. Now from reading to printing, printing is some, uh, displaying is uh, some result, right? But before this, some processing is required. Either we are multiplying the values or we are adding some fixed value to all these uh, array elements or we are finding which is the highest element in this uh, uh, array. So whatever is the task that is in hand, for all those things, whenever you need to access all these elements in a line, you should always use this two for loops in case of a two dimensional array and scanf is used for reading. If you want to compare, if you want to merge two arrays accordingly, you have to write the instructions here. But every time you need to access those elements, you need this two nested for loops. Now let us see how to display it, displaying values. For displaying values also we have to use uh, nested for loops but here before we start printing the second row elements we will have to go to a new line. So this uh, similar program we have already seen wherein we print a triangular pattern. So before we start printing characters of the second line we need to print a new line character. So that is one thing that usually students miss. So remember for i equals to 0 i less than say 5 as per the previous example i plus plus this is going to consider the row number right now inside this we will have another for loop for j equals to 0 j less than 3 j plus plus now this is characters in every line or values in each row in each row so instead of characters, I'll write values, values in each row. Now values in each row needs to be printed. Uh, let us print them with a space, percentage D, slash T I'll give, a tab space is printed and I want to print mat IJ or AIJ, whatever is your array name, you give this. Now all the elements of one row is printed. Then once J becomes false, it means first row elements are done before going to the next row. How do you represent next row? When I becomes 1, that represents second row. When I becomes 2, that represents third row. So before value of I changes, when a value of I changes means we are ne representing next row. So before value of I changes, we should print new line character as well. So write one printf statement with slash in. In as the end of this outer for loop so before i value changes uh, we are going to the next line and then 
in the second line how many ever characters are supposed to be printed will be printing that many now this is how we are going to declare a two dimensional array assign values to this static and dynamic initialization both examples we have seen and how to display the values we have seen now using these concepts let us write one program for matrix addition and subtraction and here we are going to use two matrices for taking input values a and b and then we are going to take uh, matrix c for uh, storing the sum of these two matrices and matrix d is going to print the difference of these two matrices so i will have uh, matrix uh, matrix 2d dot c so this is a two dimensional matrix now i will uh, write program to add and subtract two matrices let us include header files hash include stdio.h now i will uh, write the main function using void main or int main anything you can use based on the compiler now i will declare four arrays here two for input matrices and two more for one for uh, storing sum and the other one for storing the difference so matrix a is going to have uh, three and two three rows and two columns and matrix b is also going to have three rows and two columns and i will have a matrix called sum that will also have three rows and two columns and i will have a matrix called difference which will have three rows and two columns and i will have two variables i and j this is to um, access all the elements of the array for row index and column index numbers now let us ask the user to enter elements for matrix a enter three cross two elements i'll write three cross two elements for matrix a for i equals to 0 i less than 3 i plus plus and we need a nested loop in which uh, we are going to take the column index number j equals to 0 j less than 2 j plus plus now for each of these values we are going to read a value scanf using scanf statement percentage d and where are we storing it in matrix a at location ij now the same set of instructions needs to be repeated for the second matrix also so i'll just copy and paste these instructions and i will change whatever is required now print three cross two elements for matrix b and same i and j i'm going to use and here instead of matrix a this is going to store values in matrix b now we have to write a loop again nested loop we need to write for adding and subtracting these two matrices in the same nested loop we are going to uh, store values for both uh, sum and difference matrices because we are going to access the same uh, uh, matrices say for example when i is 0 say uh, let me take a is 3 cross 2 matrix and uh, this is b let us assume these are the two matrices now when i is 0 and j is 0 when i is 0 and j is 0 it is going to represent element 0 0 so if i write a 0 0 it will represent this value bij will represent this value now i have two matrices sum and difference what is sum we need to add these two values and what is difference i need to subtract uh, b from a a minus b i'm going to write so since when i is 0 and j is 0 we are uh, representing the corresponding elements add these two that will give the answer for this one 1 minus 5 will give answer for this so we don't have to go through these arrays again and again therefore simultaneously we are going to find out answers for both of these matrices next we'll increase value of j right so j becomes 1 when j is 1 i is 0 and j is 1 means it is going to represent this one first row second element so aij will represent 5 bij means 2 
Now these two we will add to get the value for sum matrix. These two we will subtract to get the value for difference matrix. So simultaneously we can get values for both sum matrix as well as difference matrix. Therefore we are going to uh, write uh, in a single nested for loop. We are going to write instructions for both addition as well as subtraction. Loop for adding and subtracting. So we are supposed to write nested loop. I will write for i equals to 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. For j equals to 0, j less than 2, j plus plus. For each of these values, we are supposed to perform two instructions. So what are they? We will store aij plus bij in sum aij plus bij. This result is stored in sum ij and aij plus bij is stored in difference ij in the respective locations. So aij minus bij. This is stored in difference ij. So basically in one nested for loop I am finding sum also difference also but while displaying you can't do it simultaneously you have to write it separately. So next is displaying results. So first I'll write a printf statement to display the sum. Sum of above matrices R. And after this we will write uh, nested for loop to print some values i plus plus for j equals to 0 j less than 2 j plus plus here print f percentage d slash t sum ij and then here we write new line character this is for printing some of the matrices now for printing the other matrix we have to write nested for loop again difference of above matrices are as follows I'll just copy paste this. Instead of sum, we are going to display difference. Now let us save this program and uh, execute it. So I will compile this first. We don't have any errors. If we had errors, it would have displayed no errors. Now we are supposed to enter three cross two elements for matrix A. I will enter 1, 3, 2, 5, 8, 1. This is uh, matrix, uh, first matrix. Now I will enter uh, elements for second matrix. 2, 8, 5, 2, 3, 1. Now let us check the results. Sum of above matrices. 1, 2 uh, is 3. 3 and 8 is 11. 2, 5 is 7. Uh, 5, 2 is 7, 8, 3, 11 and 1, 1 is 2. Yeah, some of the matrices are correct. Next difference of the matrices is uh, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 2, 3 minus 8 and then uh, 2 minus 5, 5 minus 2, 8 minus 3 and 1 minus 1. So difference of the matrices are also displayed. So this is how you access a two dimensional array, how to declare how to assign values and if you have to access it like uh, change uh, any value or if you have to combine multiple values into a single matrix all these things and how to display all these things we have clearly discussed here in our next video we'll see how to write matrix multiplication which is slightly uh, uh, complicated compared to this but once you understand how to access matrices just that uh, logic for calculating matrix product values 
are slightly different and it is an important uh, topic for placements uh, matrix multiplication especially so practice this question the same program is uploaded in the telegram channel also so if you have not yet joined the channel link is present in the description uh, make sure you join the channel to get all these notes and uh, these uh, soft copy of the programs see you in the next video bye bye